Hey there, Angular folks, and welcome back. Angular recently introduced a new package called Angular Aria, and it was released in developer preview just a few weeks ago. So if you've seen it mentioned in the docs, you've probably wondered, do I need this? Is this something I should start using now? And what problem is it actually trying to solve? In this video, I want to answer those questions by walking through a realistic example showing what Angular Aria does, why it exists, and when it actually makes sense to use it. This is not a full API tour. It's about understanding the why. Angular Aria is a collection of headless accessible directives that implement common Aria interaction patterns. Headless just means there are no styles and no markup assumptions. Angular Aria provides behavior and accessibility. You control the HTML and CSS. These directives handle things like applying the correct Aria attributes, managing keyboard navigation, handling focus correctly, and supporting screen readers. All of the stuff that's easy to get wrong when building custom interactive components. Tabs are a great example because they look simple, but accessibility-wise, they're not. Browsers don't give you accessible tabs for free. Once you move beyond native elements, things like roles, focus behavior, keyboard interaction, and ARIA relationships are not automatic. Here's a simple tabs layout built with generic HTML. Visually, this looks like tabs, but from the browser's perspective and from assistive technologies, this UI has no semantic meaning. There's no way to know which element is a tab which panel is active, how keyboard users should navigate, and all that means it's not accessible. This is where the Web Accessibility Initiative's ARIA tabs pattern comes in. The W3C defines required keyboard behavior. Arrow key navigation, home and end keys, enter and space for activation, and specific focus management rules. It also defines required roles for the tab list, tabs, and panels as well as required ARIA attributes like ARIA selected, ARIA controls, and ARIA labeled by. None of this is optional. If you want accessible tabs, all of it needs to be correct. So what does it take to make our example accessible? Well, it takes all of this. To implement this by hand, you need to add the ARIA roles and attributes you need to add conditional tab index management, and you need to add keyboard event handlers. And that's just in the template. In the TypeScript, you need to add even more. You need to add logic to move focus correctly. You need to add logic to activate tabs. You need to add logic to keep state in sync. And that's just to build one tabs component. This is a lot of manual work and it's very easy to get subtly wrong. This is where the new Angular Aria patterns come into play. This is exactly the problem Angular Aria is trying to solve. It provides headless directives that implement these Aria patterns correctly so you don't have to wire everything by hand. Let's switch over and replace all of this custom logic with Angular Aria. But before we can use it, we need to install the package. You can do that by running this command at the root of your Angular project. Now, I already have it installed here, so let's move on. First, I'm going to remove all the ARIA roles and attributes, the keyboard event handlers, the tab indexes, and even the IDs. Then, in the TypeScript, I'm going to remove all of the custom logic here too. At this point, we're left with just structure and content. Now we're ready to add the Angular Aria directives. Pretty much everything we need will be added in the template, but before we can use them there, we need to add them to the component imports. We will need to import the tabs, tab list, tab, tab panel, and tab content directives all from the Angular Aria package. Now we can switch over to the template. Here, on the outer container, we add the tabs directive. This acts as the coordinator. 
It wires together tabs, panels, keyboard navigation, and focus behavior. Next, on the element that contains the tabs, we add tab list. This represents the ARIA tab list pattern and manages keyboard navigation between tabs. This directive also exposes a selected tab input, which we'll use to set the initial active tab. Each individual tab gets the tab directive. Every tab must define a unique value. That value is how Angular ARIA associates a tab with its panel and keeps selection, focus, and ARIA attributes in sync. Each panel gets the tab panel directive. Just like the tabs, each panel must declare the same value as the tab it belongs to. Angular enforces this at compile time, which prevents broken accessibility from ever shipping. Then, inside each panel, we wrap the content in an ng template with tab content. This allows Angular ARIA to control when panel content is rendered and displayed. And that's it. That's all we need. No custom keyboard handlers, no ARIA attributes, no focus management logic. Let's compare this to what we had before. We've kept all of the behavior, but removed almost all of the complexity. Pretty crazy how much simpler it is now, right? Now let's check it out in the browser. Let's open this in a new tab so that we can inspect with the browser dev tools. Look at that. We've got all of the accessibility. We've got the appropriate tab indexes, ARIA selected, ARIA controls, ARIA labeled by, and ARIA roles for tab list, tab, and tab panel too. Plus, the keyboard functionality works too. When I tab, it brings focus to the tab list. The arrow keys move between tabs. The home and end jump to the first and last tabs and Enter and Space activate the Focus tab. All of this works exactly as the ARIA specification requires, without us writing any of that logic ourselves. One important thing to keep in mind, Angular ARIA is still in developer preview. That means APIs may evolve, patterns may expand, and this is something you'll need to evaluate intentionally. You'll just want to understand these risks before using it in your own apps, but personally, I'm pretty excited about it. Here's the decision framework I recommend. If native HTML can express the interaction, use native HTML. If you're building custom interactive components like tabs, menus, or combo boxes, Angular ARIA can save time and reduce mistakes. If accessibility correctness matters, especially in reusable components, Angular ARIA is worth evaluating. It doesn't make your app accessible by magic, but it does help you implement accessibility correctly. Angular ARIA exists to take complex, well-defined accessibility patterns and make them easier to apply correctly. It's focused, it's headless, and it's intentionally optional because accessibility isn't about adding libraries. It's about making good decisions. If you liked this, be sure to like and subscribe. And hey, if you want to represent Angular in the real world, check out the Shieldworks gear linked below. It's built for developers who treat their work like a real craft. All right, that's all for today. See you in the next one.